Now we want to look at driving and driven dimensions. We've talked about dimensioning previously, uh, very briefly, and we talked about the fact that when we have a driving dimension, is a dimension that dictates the the behavior of other of other dimensions in geometry, while a driven dimension is one that simply follows driving directions, uh, dimensions. Sorry. Now. There is a third type of dimension in terms of display, which is what we would call the overdefined dimension. Let's say that we have this rectangle and we simply look at the size of one edge, 82.88 millimeters. If we were to repeat that dimension, we see that the display, the appearance, is different. We now get a green arrow and green measurement versus black arrow and black measurement. Now, when we have what's called an overdefined uh, piece of geometry or overdefined object, we end up getting dimensions which are green with a green line. However, when we have a driving dimension, we have a dimension that is black with a black line. A driven dimension is a combination of these two. A driven dimension has a black line but a green measurement. Let's look at now how we actually find and how we use driving and driven dimensions. So let's get rid of this. Let's fit our screen. Let's select a rectangle by two points. And we will make the width 200 millimeters. And the height, we don't really care about. We will just set it at about 79. So now we have this rectangle that is a width of 200 and a height of about 79. We want to make our 200 millimeters be our driving dimension for the figure that we're going to make, which is composed of this rectangle. Let's also add a right-hand triangle to the right side of this rectangle. So we just use the line tool to fill in these two lines here. Now, we want to use a smart dimension tool and we'll dimension our width of our rectangle, which we know is 200. Now, when we have a dimension, solid edge actually allows you to, sorry about that, actually allows you to create relationships between these dimensions. Now, if you see my mouse is, or my cursor is over this dimension and we see V883 equals 200. If we right click, on this dimension while we're using the select tool and go to edit formula we see the dynamic toolbox actually change to give us the name v883 which we saw before formula and comment by three text boxes now the name is what we set the dimension name to so let's call this dimension x1 press the green check mark to accept that now if we put our cursor back over the 200 should show us the name of our dimension. X1 equals 200, right? Now we can use this dimension by knowing its name and we can call it in other dimensions by looking at the formula. If we reopen edit formula, by looking at the formula text box, we can actually recall other dimensions by the name. And we can therefore specify a driving dimension versus a driven dimension. So let's make a driven dimension using 200 as our driving dimension. Now let's dimension this left edge and we'll take it as what it is. Go to our select tool and right click, go to edit formula. <clears throat> and let's change the name of this to Y1. Now we want this to be half of whatever X1 is. So in the formula, we're going to put the name X1 divided by 2. And we select that with our green checkbox. And we see that this now changes to 100 while we had 200 for our dimension X1. Let's do that again with the dimension over here. Smart dimension on here just to get our base dimension. Just accept it. Go to our select tool, right click on the dimension, go to edit formula, and let's call this Y2. And now we want this to be dependent on Y1. So we want it to be one quarter of the length of Y1. So in our formula, we're going to put Y1 divided by 4. And we'll accept that.
Now we see while Y1 was 100 millimeters, Y2 is now 25 millimeters. Now let's pause for a second and take a look at what we have here. We have our driving dimension that's 200 millimeters that's fully black. However, our driven dimensions have a black line and green text for both Y1 and Y2. Now this is a difference in appearance between the driving dimension and driven dimensions. Driven dimensions, as I stated, have a black line and arrows, but green units or green measurements. Now let's just finish this up and let's make this dimension here uh, a driven dimension. So uh, before we do that, actually, let us delete this line here because we don't really need it. Uh, for our figure or for what we want. So let's now dimension this outer edge here and accept it as it is. And we'll go to our select tool, right click and go to edit formula and we'll call this Y3. And we essentially want to maintain this kind of layout. So we're looking at a right hand triangle. So to define the hypotenuse of this right hand triangle, we need to use Pythagoras theorem. And to enter that formula, we're going to use y1 squared plus y2 squared all raised to the power of a half or the square root of all that. And we'll enter that. Now we see that it's the same dimension, 103, nothing's changed, but we see now it's a driven dimension. The reason nothing changed was because we had it in the layout that essentially we wanted before, but now we've made it a driven dimension. Now let's look at what we have overall. We have X1 being the driving dimension for Y1 and Y1 being the driving dimension for Y2 and Y3. Now that means that if any change is made to X1, then changes will be made to Y1, Y2, and Y3. So let's go ahead and try that. Just left click once on this dimension and let's change it to a length of 150. Let's press enter. Now what happened here? Now you see that we have 150. We know that 75 is half of 150 and we know that 18.75 is one quarter of 75. Now there's a reason that this happened. The reason is that this is not fully defined in terms of the relationship between the different sides. Let's undo and let us actually now turn on our relationship handles. <clears throat> Sorry. Now if we look at our relationship handles, let's make a relationship that states that these two sides are equal because at no time did we actually state that these two sides are 200. We defined this line as being 200, but this line was never really defined. So let's go to the equal relate in uh, constraint. Sorry, in our relate container. Uh, we left click on the upper and then the lower. So now these two should be defined as being 200 millimeters always. So let's turn off our relationship handles and see if there's any difference. So we left click once and we choose 150. Enter. And we got to 150, but now we see that there's a difference here and here. We see that we have 77 at 3.31 and 18.75, all values that we had before. Now we're maintaining the same line that we did, but there's a disconnect here. Why is that? Because there was no constraint holding these, this uh, geometry to the rest of our rectangle. Let's undo that. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to use some of our constraints to make sure that certain points here don't move. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the connect uh, constraint and we're going to connect this endpoint to that endpoint. And the same thing here, we're going to use this to connect this endpoint to that endpoint. Yes, yes. Essentially, what we've done now is we should have constrained our right hand triangle to our rectangle. So if we change this, 150, let's see what happens. There we go. So essentially what's happened is that we have now allowed
this driving dimension to change each of these dimensions with just the addition of some uh, extra constraints to make sure that the measurements uh, keep the whole figure in place. Now why is this important? Say that we wanted to maintain this figure, this, this uh, feature, no matter what, and we knew that this dimension was our main dimension or the only dimension that we actually knew. If we change this dimension in any way, we want it to maintain the shape just by changing that one dimension. So it, ch it saves time and also allows us to maintain this relative shape in our object. So using driving and driven dimensions is a very useful way to actually go ahead and maintain any kind of relationship between geometric parts, or in other words, maintaining the re relative relationships of parts within a single feature. So if we just point out again, driving dimensions are black with black lines, whereas driven dimensions are green text and black lines. And as we stated, if we are to dimension an existing dimension, it becomes a overdefined dimension, which is a green line, green text. Okay, so go ahead, play around with that, and we'll see you soon. And that's it. Cam Studio and that's it.